Hey, what's up? This is Chris from the Longest Way. I'm still home. It's, I don't know, it's uh, January 9th, I think. And I'm in sort of a limbo here. I'm hanging out. My foot is still bad. It's, it's, it's getting better, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm taking this medication here three times a day. And uh, I'm hanging out. The doctor said I'm not supposed to be walking around that much. So yeah, basically I can go to the grocery store. But I'm not supposed to be like doing any heavy walking, so I'm just staying in basically. And uh, I'm working on the blog, I'm working on pictures, uh, stuff like that. And I've been reading a lot, which is nice. Um, apart from watching Hugh Grant movies, which is also nice, but yeah. Um, when I'm on the road, uh, I, I have a little electronic book reader thingy. But it's just not the same. I don't know. I'm, I'm busy on the road. Um, you know, I'm, I'm walking for like, I don't know, eight hours a day. And then I get home and I sort my pictures, write the blog. And then like electronic readers, they're nice. I like them. But they don't feel, I don't know, it's just not the same. Like if I have a real book, it just feels different. Like, you can touch it. I know the pages and I make little marks, little markings here. And, and it has a smell. You can feel it and I don't know with the electronic reader. There's no feeling of like Success like, oh, I finished a book like this feels nice like I finished it and I put it there and And it's done and I can go back to it to my little markings here You know, I mark the pages Yeah, but anyway, um, I was gonna tell you about this book here that I got I laid eyes on it like a year ago um, it's a photo book, a coffee table book. It's called With Scott to the Pole. This one here. Uh, I ordered it from, I think, Australia or something. I don't know. I don't remember. But um, it was delivered. took a while. It's a coffee table book, so it's big and fat and heavy. It's full of photos. And it's by Herbert Ponting, the guy who went to uh, Antarctica with uh, Robert, Robert Falcon Scott. You know the the... Uh, beginning of the 20th century, um, everybody was racing to, to the North Pole, who can get there first, to uh, certain parts of Tibet and uh, to the South Pole. Everything else had basically been covered. So like these uh, imperialist nations and non-imperialist nations, um, the ones that could afford it basically, they were, they were in these races, like who can get there first. And, and in 19, I think 09, yeah, 1909, the South Pole was like the last thing. It was the hardest thing. Like how can you get to the exact pole? You'd have to uh, take a little ship, you know, not like a nice uh, whatever nuclear submarine of today, but like or like a, an icebreaker of today, but like a shitty, uh, I don't know, early early twentieth century ship, and um, like a, like a coal steamer. Take it there, take it through the ice, then set up a camp. And then try to walk or like haul your stuff or like take ponies or like take these shitty um, electric sleds that they had that looked a little bit like like tanks um, and then uh, dog sleds like uh, some people took dogs so that proved to be like the best and uh, this exhibition here no this expedition here the Robert Falcon Scott ex expedition was uh, yeah British uh, explorer. Robert Falcon Scott with a team of Brits, of Englishmen. And they were trying to get to the pole, uh, be the first there, and conduct these uh, scientific uh, experiments on the way. But then they had some sort of lo logistic problems and planning problems, and um, they threw some of their planning uh, overboard and, and changed it in the last minute. And then another guy showed up, a Norwegian guy. Uh, what's his name? Amundsen. Roald Amundsen, and that guy was an absolute pro. Didn't do any scientific experiments, just aimed for the pole. Got there first on his dog slits, got back, and these guys here, they got there, and they reached the pole after the Norwegian guy. They felt this, um, or they must have felt this feeling of just despair. You know, you've taken on all these hardships just to get there and be second. And then they died on the way back, so it's terrible. And and this book here, uh, the first one I read was this one. There's a German edition of the diary, Robert Falcon Scott's diary. Uh, they found it on on his body, 
when they found his body after they perished, and then they they, they put it into print. And um, it's not the best book uh, from I don't know writing style. Like the the dude just makes these scientific observations, and he's not really the best writer. But the end is harrowing. Like when they know they're gonna die, they know. And you know, you're reading this and, and, and then you know from the beginning that they're gonna die. So everything they do where they're like, hopefully noting these things in their diary, like this dude here and his buddies, you're thinking, just stop, just stop. It's not, it's not gonna end well. And then in the end, they know. At some point you can feel it in the diary, they know. And uh, yeah, it's terrible. The whole thing is terrible. Uh, I highly recommend it as a read. It's It's got the spirit of, um, I think it's a danger that adventurers face, explorers face, that basically everybody faces, um, is, is, is kind of getting caught in your mission, where you have a mission and um, and you're willing to give up everything for it, but are you really? Like in the last, I don't know, moments in their tent, are they... I don't know. Do they have regrets? I don't know. And this one is the Norwegian guy's uh, diary. Where like I don't know. He put it in book form. So it's probably not exactly the diary. It's probably like uh, lectured, edited. But um, yeah, I, I was planning to hate this guy. You know, because he beat uh, Robert Falcon, Falcon Scott, and I really liked Robert Falcon Scott, and I felt so sad for him and his buddies that they died. So I was prepared to hate this guy. Like, while I was reading this one, I was just hating that Norwegian guy. But then you read this here, and it's a totally different dude. Like, the guy is has this brilliant sense of humor. And he's just, he's just so professional and so focused on a target. He doesn't... Like, these guys here, on their way back from the pole, when basically everything is going to shit. And, and they, they, they must have known that... that you know, chances were chances were getting really high that they were gonna die, but they still spend like a day or two collecting rocks on a, on a glacier, and you're thinking like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, this is just tragic to read. Stop fucking collecting the fucking rocks. And this guy here doesn't collect any rocks. Like he's just he has a target. He takes his dogs. He eats the dogs on the way. He still has a bunch of dogs to get to come back. It's an awesome read. The guy is just this super dry sense of humor. And in the end, I ended up loving both of them. They're just the same, the same people, but but different. Like both of them have this, this uh, ambition. Both of them are explorers, adventurers. They they both, they're willing to sacrifice a lot. And it could have ended the other way around. It could have been Amundsen dying, and it could have been Scott prevailing. Though I don't know, <laughs> Amundsen seems a lot more professional and um, and focused. And get into the pole, you know, it doesn't do the scientific stuff, but yeah, but anyway, I like them. But reading this uh, made me kind of reflect on the whole exhibition thing, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I keep saying exhibition, expedition, where you know, I've got my mind set on walking back from Beijing to, to here, you know, where I'm at right now. And um, yeah, how much am I willing to sacrifice? And at what point do you kind of get stuck in the mission? And life keeps, I don't know, it keeps um, revolving. It keeps just people, they, 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 they don't stop living just because you're out there walking or doing whatever, you know, going to the pole. Like this Scott dude, the last diary entries, I, I, I literally cried. They're terrible. Like when he, when he writes to his wife and, and he tells her to watch the kids and, uh, and then he crosses out the word wife and, uh, yeah, I assume with his dying breath, he he writes widow, <laughs> and you're like, fuck, man, like that that was a fucking mistake. Like the whole thing, you should have just relaxed, you know. You should, maybe all that ambition. Maybe sometimes you just need to be happy with what you have. But anyway, this one here, um, the coffee table book. I was gonna show it to you. Let me see if I can show it like this here. This is a um, is a photographer slash cinematographer slash he apparently liked to be called camera artist. This guy here, Ponting, 
I have a huge aperture because it's so dark, so I don't know if it's not that clear. Um, I'm sorry. But anyway, the, the book has a little bit of uh, text here. Uh, it's like a bunch of, I don't know, it's just kind of a recap of the whole thing. But then these pictures, they're just, look at them. They, they go to the South Pole on this ship. <laughs> uh, you know, this ship here, check it out. Let's see if I can get it in focus. I'm so sorry. Look at it. That's the ship that they took to the South Pole. That's them here. Isn't that? I don't know. It's it's just awesome. And that's the dudes <laughs> in their shitty gear. You know, today everybody has these. I don't know. You go to an outdoor store, and everything is so just perfect. You know, you can you can be comfortable and happy in all kinds of uh, temperatures, and everything is shiny and neon and red and glowing and. And it's like super Gore-Tex, technical, whatever. And these dudes, I don't know what they're wearing, but it looks pretty simple. Yeah, and this is, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, that's uh, that's when they find a Norwegian camp and they're like, fuck us. <laughs> the Norwegians were there before them. And uh, yeah, it's all, that's them here. That's the face of someone who got to the pole. Let's see. Can I get this? No. Here. That's the face of someone who got to the pole. Second. And all of them, they die. It's just terrible. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I highly recommend uh, reading all this shit. Uh, it tells you a lot about, I don't know, ambition and then pressure too. Like these guys, they, it's, it's what they do. It's like their, their place in society depends on this here. They're explorers. They do it for the nation, for the glory of the whatever. They're kings and queens and their countrymen. And it's, there's a whole lot of vanity in it. It's just, you know, who, who's first? And today, I really want to go there someday. There is a scientific station at the South Pole where Scott, these guys, where they died. And where this guy just kind of showed up like a month before them. Or like a few weeks. Um, and reached the pole first. And then went back with his dogs and his buddies. And uh, the station is reachable, I don't know, by helicopter or something. And it's like, I, I've seen pictures online. It's huge. And it's like, it's got glass, like, all around. And uh, it's got all the facilities you need. It's nice and warm inside. There's, like, a, a, a gym, a kitchen. And, and I don't know what I found online. is They were, like, making cookies or something. And it's got a library. And apparently they got internet there. And there's these scientists, and they're hanging out in the station. And the station is apparently called the uh, Amundsen Scott Skate Station. So it's like, you know, they're they're sort of joined now that they're both dead. And there's these people just hanging out at the South Pole, like this place that people died trying to reach or reaching it and not, not making it back. Yeah, and it just feels more tragic that way. I really want to go there. Anyway, yeah, maybe I've been hanging out uh, at home <laughs> in limbo for too long. <sighs> yeah, but I think about these things sometimes. I don't want to get caught in a mission. Have a good day. Do deaths and dudes.